Nakdamon Ben-Gurion was one of the three wealthiest individuals in Jerusalem. There is a possibility that Nakdamon Ben-Gurion was Nicodemus who met the Lord Jesus that night. Nicodemus seems to symbolize someone who is half-believing, and the Gospel writer desires to see him repent for a new birth. Nicodemus' final appearance in John 1940 reports that he brought many spices to be sprinkled on the body of Christ. He procured myrrh and aloes for Jesus' burial. Nicodemus, along with Joseph of Arimathea, took care of Jesus Christ's embalming and burial. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about an hundred pound weight, John 19.39. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Little else is known about him, aside from many legends such as in apocryphal texts like the Gospel of Nicodemus. In this apocryphal gospel, Nicodemus is mentioned as the author. According to scholars, the text was composed around 400 AD indicating that it was not Nicodemus from Jesus' time who wrote it. There's also an identification with a historical Jewish figure, Nakdamon Ben-Gurion, a wealthy and charitable individual mentioned in the Talmud. You may already be familiar with the name David Ben-Gurion. He was one of the founding fathers of modern Israel, serving as its first prime minister from 1948 to 1963 an Ashkenazi Jew, an immigrant from Poland. His name is immortalized in the Ben-Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv. But it's also interesting to discuss another historical figure from Israel, Nakdamon Ben-Gurion mentioned above. The Jewish historical figure, Nakdamon Ben-Gurion, had the duty of leading prayers, including prayers for rain and sunshine. Nakdamon Ben-Gurion was one of the three wealthiest individuals in Jerusalem, and he provided financial support and logistics for the Jewish people when Jerusalem was besieged by Vespasianus during the Jewish War. The name Nakdamon Ben-Gurion is also mentioned in Ketabeth 65 until 67. As a wealthy man who hosted a lavish wedding feast for his daughter, costing one million gold diners. However, he later became impoverished following the fall of Jerusalem around 70 CE and his significant financial contributions to the Jewish War. In Josephus' Jewish War, it also confirms the significant wealth of Nakdamon Ben-Gurion. There is a possibility that Nakdamon Ben-Gurion was Nicodemus who met Jesus that night, as recorded in the Gospel of John. Nicodemus greeted Jesus using the respectful title, Rabbi. This title, Rabbi, acknowledges Jesus' position as a teacher and expert in Scripture. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin, so his address was not casual. He had grounds to call Jesus Rabbi. Indeed, the Bible itself records that Jesus taught in the temple in Jerusalem. In John 7, 45-53, we read that when Nicodemus expressed doubts about the legality of Jesus Christ's arrest, he was immediately questioned about his loyalty. Nicodemus, who had gone to him before, and who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing, and learning what he does? They replied with a sneer, Are you also from Galilee? Search and see that no prophet rises from Galilee. These people only saw Jesus as coming from Galilee. They didn't know that Jesus Christ was actually born in the city of David, Bethlehem Ephrathah, as prophesied in the scriptures. Judaism, the Jewish religion, follows its customs and traditions from birth, marked by birth ceremonies and circumcision, then continued with ceremonies for subsequent stages, including bar mitzvah, etc. For a Jewish leader like Nicodemus, he would have been ordained into his leadership role in the Sanhedrin. And the position held by Nicodemus would have been the highest level of understanding in his religious education. 
he would have reached maturity and a high status in Jewish leadership. Yet, despite all the religious education he had undergone, he was quite surprised to hear Jesus' statement, You must be born again, John 3-7. Then Jesus challenged him by saying, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? In John 3-8, we read that Jesus explained to Nicodemus that the Spirit of God is the personal cosmic force that empowers individuals to be born anew, enabling them to become citizens of the kingdom of God. Jesus' rhetorical question to Nicodemus was also a challenge to the authority of Jewish leaders, indicating that the Jewish people were not sensitive to spiritual matters. It's not surprising that Nicodemus, one of the most learned in Jewish religious education, didn't grasp the most spiritual things. However, his encounter with Jesus surely changed his life. In the Bible, Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a Jewish religious leader, meaning he was also a member of the Sanhedrin. Jewish religious leaders whose authority was limited were approved by the Roman government. Nicodemus showed kindness to Jesus. He visited Jesus at night, and his name is only mentioned in the Gospel of John. It appears that he was genuinely interested in Jesus Christ's character and teachings, but feared being discovered by his fellow Pharisees. He seems to symbolize someone who is half-believing, and the Gospel writer wants to see him repent for a new birth. He couldn't understand the spiritual metaphors used by Christ. His conversation with Jesus at night focused on the rebirth of humans from water and the Holy Spirit as a prerequisite for acceptance into the kingdom of God. He realized that showing sympathy for Jesus would invite hostility from the Jewish authorities. The Gospel of John portrays Nicodemus as a Jew who might repent and join the Christian church, resulting in his expulsion from the synagogue. Nicodemus reappears in John 7, 45-52, more boldly protesting against the condemnation of Christ without giving him a hearing. Wisely, he argued based on the principles existing within their own law and the undisputed norms of justice that no one should be punished without first being heard. If he were to assert the superiority of Christ's teachings or provide evidence of his miracles, or inform them of the divine words conveyed to him, then such actions would be akin to casting pearls before swine, who would trample them underfoot and turn to tear him apart. Therefore, he disregarded those matters.